Let me share a story with you guys. You might relate to this. Get comfortable. This could be you. I remember I was so, so nervous. I couldn't get on the, the train. I couldn't get on the tube without feeling like people were looking at me. When I used to get on the train, I couldn't make eye contact. I felt um, self-conscious, overly self-conscious. And I used to feel really nervous. My heart would start beating. I'd feel like that. I couldn't get my breath. My chest would get tight here. I'd feel sweaty, I'd feel nervous, anxious. I'd feel at fret, I'd feel as if the feeling was, well the feeling was anxiety, fight or flight. I'll give you another scenario. I had some very, I wouldn't say strange, because strange is not the right word, but there were social situations that I always felt uncomfortable in. I felt uncomfortable doing the transaction. So if I was to go into a shop and buy a coffee buy a shirt, buy a t-shirt, buy a pair of trainers, I'd get nervous, I'd find it difficult. I'd feel like I, I feel like I couldn't be myself, I'd feel like my chest was tightening up, and I had real trouble making eye contact with people. I, if I was to go up to the, say for example, you're the cashier and I'm buying from you, and I'm looking at you now with eye contact, once I got to the counter, I would be like that. I would pay my, I'd be like that, head would go down, I couldn't hold it for long, I couldn't have eye contact with people. Another scenario would be, if people were too close to me, it would make me feel nervous, intimidated, it would, I'd get anxious, my stomach would start rumbling, I'd feel nervous, I'd feel a little, almost, it could change my mood, it would make me feel a little bit aggressive, I had to get out of the situation. If I got into a busy lift, I would feel nervous. Another scenario would be, if I was walking down a busy high street, if you live in London, for example, Oxford Street, or any public place, I would feel like people were judging me. I would literally feel like people were staring at me and thinking bad things about me. And my, it would even affect my walk. I couldn't walk properly. I'd have to take a different route where the street was less people on the street. And for years I had this and I just thought, I don't think, I knew I had it, but I didn't, I was ashamed of it. I didn't, I thought it wasn't normal, but I thought, I can't tell people about this because it's, it's not normal. People are going to think, people are going to think, so my nose is generally itching here. This isn't self-conscious, maybe on a very, very deep level. I thought, I can't tell people about this because they're going to think there's something wrong with me. Then it started to get worse for me. Then I started to feel really nervous around attractive women or women in general. If I was in a nightclub and there was a group of four or five girls, you know when they're having a party and they were dancing, they were dressed up nice, looking attractive, I'd feel so intimidated. I would feel, it would make me feel worthless. It would make me feel embarrassed. It would make me feel inadequate. Um, I'd be self-conscious. I'd be thinking that they think bad things about me. Then I, then it would get worse. My mind would start racing. I'd be thinking that everyone in the club's thinking bad things about me. Then it would get worse. I would be thinking that one of the guys in the nightclub is gonna come over and start on me and I'd start preparing myself. If he comes and starts to me, I'm gonna do this, this, and I don't wanna get embarrassed in front of the girls. Then I'd start to look at my appearance and think, am I ugly? My clothes don't look right, I've got a stain here, I'm not groomed. I'd, my mind would just start really, my internal monologue would start beating me up, then I'd panic, I'd get the fight or flight. The fight or flight is where I'd get anxiety. I literally could feel trembling. My voice would start to go, I was about to say monotone, my voice is monotone anyway. But I mean, my voice would um, quiver. I couldn't speak properly. I'd get tight here. If someone had asked me a question, I, would, I couldn't stay in the conversation long. If, the, if they said, you know, oh, do you know where the toilet is? I'd be like, uh, yeah, it's the toilet, toilet's over here. That's, that's, that's how, how I felt for many years. Never really understood it. My family noticed it. I just associated it with being, oh, I'm just a bit shy. I'm just a bit shy. But I never realized for years that I was carrying a ton of embarrassment, shame, guilt. And this was caused through bullying, through being exposed to violence, uh, through being judged at school, criticized. A strict upbringing from my dad, he'd said a few things, he didn't mean it, you know, he didn't mean to crush my confidence, but I actually realized years later that I suffered from social anxiety. Social anxiety is exactly what it says in the title, when you have got an anxiety around people, you're frightened, 
you're frightened of people. But the interesting thing is, everyone has social anxiety, but listen up, because we're all human. When we meet someone new, we can feel a bit nervous, going for job interviews, doing public speaking, going on the first date. But what I realized was, not everyone has social anxiety to high levels as opposed to someone else. So if you suffer from social anxiety disorder and, it, and it's affecting your social life, you need to get help. Because if you don't get help, it's gonna persist, it's gonna get worse, and it's gonna ruin your life. Now, social anxiety for the first part of my 20s ruined my social life. It ruined everything. On the flip side, social anxiety changed my life. It's made me who I am. It's made me, I don't wanna be arrogant when I say this, I'm not gonna make a claim to be famous because I don't consider that successful, but that's a measure of my success. It's enabled me to grow a successful YouTube channel. I'm being careful now because I'm working a lot on my spirituality and I don't want to brag, only if it's for good reason, but it's to inspire men with social anxiety, all women. It enabled me to sleep with many attractive women. It transformed my social life. It gave me so much confidence. It enabled me, it just, improve every area of my life financially socially romantically spiritually now of course and it's almost weird to admit it i guess i still have social anxiety but i have it to such a small degree that it doesn't affect me no more because i've developed so many effective coping strategies for it i'm able to you feel the fear and as susan jeffers says feel the fear and do it anyway. Where in the old days it was feel the fear and do fuck all about it. Sorry, my French. There was periods in my life where I, my social anxiety was so bad it gave me depression. It was so bad it affected my bowels. It gave me diarrhea. It made me go to the toilet. It was so bad I couldn't eat. It was so bad I would lose weight. It was actually so bad there were times when I couldn't trust people because I was so paranoid and I felt nervous around family. I felt, no, I felt nervous around people and I felt nervous in my own company because social anxiety disorder, as I've said, it comes from trauma and then the effects of trauma can be embarrassment, lost in embarrassment, shame, the fear of being judged. If we go deeper into the psychology, social anxiety is the fear of being judged by people. So for example now, I'm doing this YouTube video and I am being judged by everyone. But I'm excited to be judged because I'm confident on the camera. I'm confident with who I am. I've got to a stage where the judgment, I still care about being judged by people, but I care to such a less degree. It, I'm free. I love people. But as I said, I still occasionally get small symptoms of social anxiety. And I'm a teacher. If this is the first time you come onto my YouTube channel, I want to inspire you. I want to tell you that it's okay to have social anxiety. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This could change your life. This transport. This made me an honest person. I was always a pretty honest person, but because when I suffered it badly, I found it very difficult to open up around people. I couldn't be myself. I struggled to speak to women. I struggled doing everyday, simple, mundane things. I couldn't get on trains without being nervous. I, I was nervous on the bus. I, I hated eye contact. I felt like I was exposed. I felt like when people were looking at me, they could see through my soul. They could see all my dark secrets. I felt it immensely, if that's the right word, I'm getting passionate talking about it. I felt judged all the time. When my mum would say, I remember my dad would say, son, can you go over to the shop and get me a newspaper and get some food for the house and I'll get you a chocolate. I'd do it because it's my dad, I had no choice anyway, but I would feel massive anxiety. I remember going down to the football pitch in my area when I was younger with my friends. I love football, I love sports, but just being nervous when there was a group around. These were all my friends or people that I knew around the area. I would feel like everyone is judging me, I'm exposed. I would sit in the group and that's what made me an introvert. So being an introvert, being shy, these are all symptoms of social anxiety. Now again, like I said, Every human being has some degree of social anxiety. If they didn't, we could run naked on the street. We would always say what was on our mind, which we don't, if we're being honest, and it's probably healthy that we don't. But as I've said, if you've got high levels of social anxiety, if, if some of those symptoms I've described you're suffering from, you, need to, you don't need to think about it, you need to get help, because I left my social anxiety go for many years. Now, hopefully, 
you won't have to go through what I went through. I got bullied because of my social anxiety. I didn't know how to control myself emotionally. So when people picked on me, I used violence as a defensive coping mechanism because, as I said, my dad was strict on me growing up. Luckily, I had a fantastic relationship with my mum, with all my family, and my dad to some extent. We got on well, we had good and bad times. I had good friends at school, but I always struggled with shyness. When family members would come round, I would go upstairs, my mum would come up and say, what are you doing in your room? Your auntie down says she wants to see you. I was nervous with my own aunties, my family. What used to happen to me was, it was almost like, because of my trauma, the first 10, 15 minutes of meeting a new person or someone I knew, I would be nervous. I would eventually settle down because the psychology, you know, it's basically a rational fit. Your family's not gonna start laying into you. I knew that, you know, my auntie's not stronger than me and I'm not gonna put my hands on my auntie, but I'm just, you know, explaining. But this irrational fear thinks you're at threat. It feels that you're gonna be harmed. So the body, it's like an alarm clock in the body. It's fight or flight and basically, you develop negative thinking, you, I suffer depression from it. So I understand social anxiety very, very well. And this is what I do for a living. I teach men on my six weeks program how to manage their social anxiety and how to be socially confident. I'm a contradiction, I know, because people will probably say, well, how can you teach people how to overcome social anxiety if you suffer it yourself? Well, who better? Who better? I've developed the coping strategies and most people would never know it. If you met me, you wouldn't know that I suffered social anxiety. When I tell people, they don't believe me because I'm very, very confident in who I am. But it's, um, but as I said, I struggle with it sometimes. Sometimes I do public speaking. I have to give talks in London. Uh, I, I go on radio shows. I've, you know, I've been on, I went and done something for TV and never got televised. I was really nervous. I was going to meet uh, celebrities and they wanted me to do a scene and I was nervous, my heart was beating out my chest and I was sweating. I mean, most people would be nervous going to meet a celebrity, but I've been able to manage it and just be really confident with it and get hold of the fear. Where, as I said, most people have got social anxiety or ashamed, they don't want to tell people about it because it's a people phobia. So if you need to tell someone, you actually, you actually have to confront people. I want, I'm here to say to you, I'm the proof. There's nothing to be ashamed of, it's not your fault but it is your responsibility to react and go and manage it and you know do something about it. So I've learned reading books on social anxiety don't cure social anxiety. You know, speaking about it helps, but you have to speak about it, but you actually got to go out and it, you've actually got to go out and expose yourself to the feelings. So what I do on my six weeks transformation program, I get people to gradually expose themselves to the feelings of anxiety by speaking to people, giving compliments, starting conversations, coming with me, watching me do it, getting them involved, until they gradually rewire their psychology through positive reference experience and some negative, because we need to learn how to deal with social confrontation. When my social anxiety was at its highest, I was afraid to say no to people, I was afraid to disagree, I became a people pleaser. As a coping mechanism, very well known in Freudian psychology, to protect myself, so I became a people pleaser. Then on the flip side, I could be extremely harsh with people because I had no emotional stability because I was afraid and that's what fear can do. That's what social anxiety disorder does. So it ruins your social life if you let it. If you use your fear, manage it, which I teach on the program and all on my YouTube channel, you can connect with people on such a deep level. Now, this is why I got so dedicated to learning pickup um, learning how to meet women and interestingly enough when I become a teacher myself When I first started out I was teaching men how to sleep with women from the street I was teaching what's called day game pickup or street pickup But I started to notice a pattern with the students I started to notice that they were very anxious like they were nervous with me. I didn't notice immediately then I realized that it's actually the problem stems deeper than what men actually make it out to be. So most guys will maybe take a boot camp with me, they'll do the six weeks program. Even before I was running the six weeks program, they do with other companies, they'll just say, oh, I've just got to approach anxiety with women. Now that can be the case of some men, but 90% of the clients I work with have got social anxiety, they've got a people phobia, they're not fully comfortable around their friends, they're not fully comfortable with their family, they're not comfortable with themselves. So this is how powerful the work is that I do and it's life changing. And yes, it's not just 
taking you out and just getting you to say hello. I'm actually teaching you how to attract women because I've said it before. Women are people, men are people, because lots of men will say, I don't have social anxiety, I just get nervous around women. But that's not true. We have to be honest and be truthful. I put my hands up. I had social anxiety. I still have social anxiety. However, I've learned to manage my social anxiety. I've learned to be very confident of who I am through practice, through experience, through success, and sharing it with the whole world. I'm, pr I'm, I'm thankful for social anxiety. This is gonna sound mental. I'm glad I got bullied. You know, I'm glad that my dad was tough on me because it made me, it made me confident. Now, for those of you who don't suffer from social anxiety and the symptoms I've described, you're like, I don't have that. You're blessed, good for you. But you can, you can bet your life, there's still areas in your life that you can improve on. No one is their full, you know, potential, their full, their most confident self. Everyone needs to, to be upgraded. You know, confidence is something that comes and goes. I'm confident today doing this video. God willing, I'm gonna be confident the rest of my life and keep growing. But something could happen in the days ahead. I get depressed, I get upset, I have a breakup. And this can bring on anxiety. Anxiety is fear. Fear makes you lose confidence. So it's very important to work on yourself all the time. And I'm a huge believer in we need to work. So as I was saying, even if you don't have high levels of social anxiety, I'm sure you're watching my YouTube channel because you want to grow, you want to become more confident. Now, I don't know every teacher out there that teaches with social anxiety. I don't think there's that many people teaching it. Most people are teaching pickup artistry or they're teaching confidence and social confidence, which I think is great. I'm not a fan of pickup artistry, as you know. It was the path that I chose to step away from. However, I think I'm very qualified, well, I don't think I know it. I've been teaching men with social anxiety for four years. Excuse me, sorry. I've transformed hundreds of men's lives on my six weeks program. I basically dedicated the six weeks program for men that have suffered from social anxiety, social anxiety disorder, that are shy, that feel they can't talk about it, and they're not getting the results that they want in their dating life. And the, and the most, do you know what the most exciting thing is? And I really mean this from my heart. Guys who suffer social anxiety are actually very socially confident. It's just the fear is in the way it's stopping them from expressing themselves. I've said it before. I've worked with doctors that have got social anxiety and you think to yourself, how can a doctor have social anxiety? He deals with patients, but they do. How can a professional dating coach have social anxiety? But I do. Um, I've worked with bankers, people from finance, lots of men that work in the techie world that are on computers a lot, they get a lot of social anxiety. So there are reasons why you have social anxiety, therefore there's a solution. I've worked with guys that are very confident. I work with a scientist that's done public speaking in front of thousands of people. I, I even done it myself. And he has social anxiety disorder. So social anxiety can be very complex. Some people are uh, amazing one-on-one, -on -one, but some people struggle in groups. I know for me, I'm a natural introvert, so I'm much better in smaller groups, I, I'm better one-on-one. -on -one. Most of my teaching is one-on-one. However, because of the coping strategies I've developed and I've taught myself, I'm, I'm very good in groups. I know how to adjust. I know how when that feeling rises up of anxiety and fear and I get rational thoughts, I know how to bring it down, change the perception of the thoughts and be myself and be better. It, it's actually become a gift for me where it used to hold me back. And um, I felt embarrassed. I thought, I thought it made me feel unattractive. It made me think there's something wrong with me. There is nothing wrong with you, but having said that, you've got to get it sorted. Because if you don't get it sorted, it will persist. It's like a monster. It will get bigger and bigger. And the mind plays tricks on you. It, the body follows the mind. So social anxiety is created from the mind. And it's created from experience. So most people's social anxiety, if not all, has happened from childhood. Very common cases is always bullying, uh, bad parenting, you know, distrusting people. And that is the thing, when you've got high levels of social anxiety, it can be very difficult to trust people because you feel judged. When we feel judged, what do we do as a protective mechanism? We recluse, we back away, we keep our mouth shut, we don't express ourselves. So the benefits of my six weeks program is, well, I've just said all of it. You're gonna be able to do job interviews, get the job you want. You're gonna improve your dating life. You're gonna be able to do public speaking. You're gonna be able to connect with people on an honest, congruent level, and it's, I can't tell you, it's, it's life it's life changing. I really felt like um, when I started handling mine, 
I couldn't believe the amount of confidence I had. I couldn't believe my conversation skills improved. I couldn't believe how much better my dating life got. Women got more attracted to me. I couldn't believe how many new friends I, I was able to make. I couldn't believe how much of the embarrassment and the shame and the guilt that I was carrying from years of bullying and just feeling socially recu rec reclused <laughs> is coming back. How much it just, it felt like, a, it, it felt like I was possessed. I felt like an angel had taken out the demon and that demon was irrational fear, psychological fear. Now, as I've said, I'm gonna slightly contradict myself, so stay with me, all right, stay with me. I can now get on trains, and I don't mean this arrogantly, and I feel like I'm the most confident person on the train. Now, that might not be true, but I probably am, because I feel I can sit on the train with my legs crossed, I'm free, you can hear in my vocal tonality now that there's no anxiety in my voice because when you've got anxiety, it, it, you would tie it up here and you'll speak, uh, uh, okay, you'll speak, see, your, your tonality would change, you'll speak fast, you might stutter. Are you able to? Breathe, be calm, be on a train, be nice and calm. And if I was ever to get any social anxiety for whatever reason from stress, lack of sleep, a rational thought comes from the past or an old psychological story or pattern, I can feel, I'm not, don't worry, I'm not having sex or getting an orgasm. I can feel fear, okay, this is anxiety, it's not real, it's just in my mind. Observe it, Eckhart Tolle style. This is a spiritual teaching I learned. Observe it, okay, I feel fear, I feel anxiety. Don't identify with it and dissolve it. Back to feeling good, feeling present. No one's gonna harm me, I'm not a threat, I'm not a harm, and it goes away. And once you practice observing, disassociating and dissolving, you become so much more confident. My body language changed once I was able to really reduce my, I'd, I'd say that, I'd say when I was 17, 18, 19, my social anxiety was 100%. Like I was afraid of people, period. I was afraid of men, women, attractive women, I was afraid of public transport, getting on buses, um, interactions, transactions. I couldn't go into the bank. If, I, if there was a problem with my bank statement, I couldn't go in. I couldn't go on the phone. I was afraid that my voice would sound bad. I was terrified in job interviews. I had, I, I had panic attacks. This is the cause of social anxiety. I had, I had diarrhea. I know it's gross. I'm sorry. I was using a little toilet roll. My mom was shouting at me. She said, Jonathan, how come you use so much toilet roll? Uh, um, I got really nervous if I was on a date with a girl. I couldn't have eye contact, I felt judged in public, I couldn't go swimming, I couldn't take my shirt off, I couldn't shower. Anything that exposed me socially made me nervous. And like I said, I was anxious when I was by myself. And, and little things could trigger it off and I did not like social confrontation. If someone was to disagree, if someone was to disagree with me, if I was talking in a conversation and I said, I think Chelsea FC are the best in the world, they go, no, 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 Man United are the best. It would set fear off in me because it creates insecurity. So you can overcome it and social anxiety will make you dig so deep you'll be able to connect with people. And the interesting thing is, and I'm not being braggadacious, when you've got social anxiety, it will make you work so hard socially that you'll be much more confident than the average person. So say the average person who is fairly confident with themselves, they can interact with people. If you practice what I teach you through my YouTube channel and the exercise I teach on my six weeks program and the newsletters I send out with the advice and the tips and the practical tips, you'll be more confident than the average person. You like. I'm supremely confident now with people, but I still get nervous sometimes. So it's nice and it makes you, and then you realize, you know what? Everyone gets nervous with people, new people or at different times. Confidence is a state of mind. I'm confident now doing this video because I feel good, I feel passionate. I'm sharing what I know. This is my expertise. I've given myself the freedom, for example, I'm being very, very analytical now. Let's just see if it's coming. Am I getting any anxiety? So I'm on the screen now, I'm doing this video. I'm being judged. So I'm gonna start thinking about being judged, what people think about me. Maybe people think that I'm not good looking, maybe my hair's dodgy. Maybe women are watching now thinking he's really handsome. I'm using hypnosis on you. <laughs> so if it comes, it's not coming, you see? It's not coming because I'm exposing myself to being judged. I'm saying I want you to judge me because I love who I am, I love being me and I'm just the same as you are. And if you judge me, you judge yourself. 
So we're all frightened of each other, judging each other, but realistically, we're all one family. I'm going deep and spiritual now to throw in some of this, because this is part of my teaching. My teaching is psychological, it's practical, most of it's practical, out on the streets, in bars, well, sometimes in bars, mostly on the street, anywhere in public, on trains. I work with clients and I take them in all different situations to get them used to practicing the feelings. And the biggest thing I can give you for free right now is exposure. We have to expose ourselves to the feelings. Now, of course, when you've got social anxiety, that's the last thing you want to do because you don't want to feel the feelings. Your psychology associates the feelings as a bad thing. I learn and I teach my students to reframe fear. When you feel fear, it's good, it's exciting, you're growing. So every time you speak to new people or you talk to people, you will feel nervous at first, but you'll gradually start growing and you'll get massive confidence. It's like playing a video game. Every time you speak to someone, you get points. Now, I'm going to be straight with you guys. I'm going to be honest, because what my teaching is about. Social anxiety is a delicate matter. So everyone has it at different stages. Now, if your one is horrendous, then maybe you've got to think about consulting a psychotherapist, a counsellor, before maybe attempting to get in touch with me and take my six weeks program. But it's very likely I can help you. That's why before I work people my six weeks program, I'll have a half an hour Skype consultation, we'll have an email exchange, we'll have a phone conversation to make sure that I'm able to help you. Because if it's so bad where you physically can't go out of the house, you need to tell a loved one, a family member, you need to go and see the doctor. But I wouldn't recommend taking medication. I didn't take medication. I actually went out myself and exposed myself to it. I done it not the best ethical way, I'll be straight with you guys. I slept, I slept with lots of women at the start, I was very insecure, I practiced techniques. I eventually became really honest and my, I became famous for developing a very natural style on the streets that's pioneered and helped men all around the world. But after that, I really wanted to start, I didn't just want to be good at picking women up and just being you know, sociable in one movement or one dynamic or around just women. I wanted to get comfortable around men because I had issues around men. I was bullied by men. I was in lots of fights with men. It created trauma. So I was getting anxiety around men. I was getting, I was getting it in situations that were very simple. So it was weird because mine was complex. I could go out, I could shoot YouTube videos, I could teach men, I could pick women up, sleep with them, date them. But then I might get anxiety and very, I might get invited to a party and the people there are different and I'd feel anxiety. But then again, I think that's very normal, people get it. But I had high levels of it. I was shaking, I couldn't breathe, I used to sweat. I told you guys, um, going in news agents was difficult. If there was busy queues, if I was queuing a busy crew, <laughs> queue, is my anxiety's coming back, I'd have to leave the shop. So I know how difficult this is. I live with it for years, but I know how beautiful it is if you challenge it and start working it. It will make, and you know what? People don't even mind. I'll call it out. If I'm ever in a situation socially, I feel nervous. I just say I feel a bit overwhelmed, I'm nervous. It's not personal with you. And then it will, it will make the person understand. Because if you don't call it out and you're nervous and aggressive, people are not always going to know. They're going to think they're going to think there is something wrong with you, that you don't like them. So I've taught people to overcome anxiety on my six weeks program, my YouTube channel, and my weekend boot camps, and my seminars by being honest. Why do you guys think I'm always hammering home being yourself, being honest? Because these are all the things that social anxiety can make it very difficult for you to do. So like I said, it can be a blessing or it can be a curse. If you let it beat you and you say, oh my God, I'm afraid, I'm embarrassed, people are gonna judge me. Listen, people are gonna judge you anyway. People are gonna judge you when you're confident. They're gonna judge you. So get used to being judged. I love being judged, but part of me don't like being judged, but I do like being judged, but I don't like being judged, but I do like being judged because the rewards are high, as I said. It's not bragging, I need to say this loud on camera because I need to hear this back to be proud of my achievements and I need to say this to help as many men and women. I've slept with lots of women and I don't think you should aim for that because that's not what I teach now. But I've had the opportunity of just having some amazing relationships. I've connected with men, friends, public speaking, family relationships got better. These are the benefits of taking my coaching. If you're interested in my six weeks program, I want to help you, I'm passionate, I care. You've got to want to make the effort, get in touch, go to www.johnnyberber.com, send me an email, it all starts with just, just talk to me, you know? I'm not going to judge you, I had it myself. If you're nervous about talking to me, I understand, I'm very understanding, I'll talk you through it, you'll feel better once you have a chat with me. If you're nervous about meeting me, I understand, all my students are nervous when they meet me because they see me on YouTube and they think I'm a celebrity. I may be a bit of a celebrity, but I'm not really, I'm a normal guy and I'm here to help you and I want to help you 
and I've been able to transform the lives of hundreds of my students. They, they love me because I've helped them change their life, got them good of women, got them confident socially, and even guys that have been so crippled with anxiety they couldn't leave the house, I've helped them so much on my program just through going for a walk in central London and saying hello to people. That's how it starts and it usually finishes with meeting a girlfriend and just being socially confident and being able to make friends, go out the house, get on the train, be comfortable on the train, be comfortable in crowds, be comfortable with your family, going to meet up events, all these things. I've probably missed out on a few stuff. So I'm passionate. I had social anxiety. I still have it a little bit, but it hasn't stopped me from socializing and teaching other men how to do the same. All right, let's wrap it up there. Enjoy the process and I look forward to uh, helping you to overcome your anxiety and meet the girl of your dreams and become socially confident by now.